Hello my friends, welcome back to Storytime. Glad you could join myself and Millie who's just chilling in the conservatory, enjoying the warmth, uh, having a lovely, lovely nap. Thank you for joining me again. Hope you've had a great couple of days and we are going to continue with Little Pilgrim's Progress and a devotion from Indescribable. So I'm going to crack on and continue reading from chapter 27 and this one is called The Little Pilgrims Suffer for the King's Sake. The governor of the city was one of the wicked prince's chief servants and he hated the king and his pilgrims almost as much as his master did. When Faithful and little Christian were brought before him he was quite glad to think that he had an excuse for hurting someone whom the king loved and he said, You are two very bad boys and you must both be beaten and afterwards you shall be shut up in the iron cage so that the children of the town may see you and know what will be done to them if they follow your example. There was no use for the little pilgrims to say anything. The tears came into Christian's eyes when he heard the governor's cruel words, and he wondered whether his mother would know what was happening to him. Faithful's cheeks grew very white, but he whispered to Christian. Evangelist said that they might hurt us, but if we die, we shall go straight to the celestial city. I shall think of the king because he is sure to help me, and I will not cry. Then Christian determined to be brave too, and he rem Christian determined to be brave too, and he remembered the picture he'd seen in the house of the interpreter of the good shepherd whose feet were torn and bleeding. He is our prince, thought Christian, and he did not mind the pain. I must not either, because I am the king's servant, and it is written in my book that the king's servants are to be like the prince. And although the strokes of the heavy rod made his back and arms feel terribly sore and bruised, he behaved like a brave soldier and did not cry at all. The iron cage was a place in the middle of the market, with bars of iron in front of it, so it looked like a den for wild beasts. After they'd been beaten, the little pilgrims had chains fastened upon their hands and feet, and then the man who had charge of them put them into the cage and left them there. They could not stand upright, for they were ill and weak with pain, so they sat down together upon the ground, and each tried to comfort each other by reminding him of the king's promise. We knew that they would be cruel, said Faithful, but it is for the king's sake, and he will not let them hurt us too much. When the people in the town heard that two of the king's pilgrims were lying in the cage, they were very eager to see them, and soon a crowd of rude boys and girls, and men and women also, gathered around to stare at Faithful and Christian, and to mock them in their trouble. The boys of Vanity Fair said all kinds of cruel things to provoke the pilgrims and to make them displease the king by being passionate and angry with their enemies. But Christian and Faithful st sat still and neither of them gave a cross answer to anything that was said. At last, some of the boys, when they saw how patient the little pilgrims were, began to feel ashamed, and they cried out, Let them alone now, they have been beaten, and it is brave of them not to cry. Don't tease them any more. But the other boys were cruel and liked to see the white faces and trembling lips of the poor little pilgrims. So they went on teasing them and laughing at them until their companions grew angry and before long there was a great disturbance in the market for the boys who were for sorry for the pilgrims began to fight with those who were teasing them. The governor was obliged to send his men to stop the fighting and he ordered Christian and Faithful to be beaten once more because he said the quarrel had been on their account. Then they were taken back to the cage, where they lay all night in great pain and distress. When the morning came, Christian and Faithful were taken to the governor's court, where the judge sat every day to try any prisoners who might be brought to him. 
He was an old man with a hard and cruel face, and like the governor, he hated the king and all his pilgrims. Christian and Faithful were brought before him with their hands chained, and he asked where they'd come from and what they had been doing. Then a boy named Envy, who'd been one of the first to run after the little pilgrims and tease them, rose up and began to answer the judge's questions. He said he'd known Christian and Faithful when they were living at home, and that they were disobedient and quarrelsome and did not honour the wicked prince, who was the ruler of their country. Two other boys followed Envy, and they agreed with what had said what had said what he had said was quite true. They also told the judge that they were afraid the pilgrims would do great harm to the children of Vanity Fair if they were allowed to be at liberty, because they laughed at the treasures with which the wicked prince had filled the city, saying that they were not worth having, and they pretended that they knew the, a finer city and another king whose laws were better than those of the wicked prince. There were twelve men sitting in the court, whose duty it was to listen to everything that was said about the prisoners, and then help the judge to decide whether they deserved punishment or not. These twelve men were called the jury. Of course they were chosen from among the chief servants of the wicked prince, and were not likely to be kind or just to any of the king's pilgrims. However, they always pretended to treat their prisons, prisoners fairly. So when Faithful asked if he might speak to them, the judge answered, You ought to be put to death at once for all you've done, but we will first hear what you have to say. Christian wondered how it was that Faithful had become so brave. His face was pale, but he did not seem to be frightened, although the judge and the people in the court looked wicked and cruel. Christian afterward knew that the king had helped his little pilgrim and had made the timid boy brave and strong so that he was not afraid to speak out and own that he loved the king dearly and would not obey anyone else. When Faithful had spoken, the judge turned to the jury and said, you have heard what Envy and his companions have told us about these boys, and Faithful does not deny it. He will not serve our prince, and by the laws of our city he ought to be put to death. Then the twelve men answered, We can see that both these pilgrims are wicked boys, but Faithful is the worst, because he's not ashamed to speak against our prince. We think that he must be killed but Christian can be taken back to prison. Poor little Christian's mind had been so troubled by all that had happened that he scarcely understood what the jury was saying, and when the soldiers of the wicked prince came in and led Faithful out of the court, he wondered where they were going. In a few minutes he was too, t he, was too he too was taken into the marketplace, and there he saw his companion in the midst of those cruel men, who were beating him and wounding him with their sharp weapons. Oh, faithful, faithful, he cried out, but faithful did not answer. He was looking up into the sky, and his face was shining with a beautiful light, like the face of Christie's mother had shone when he saw her in his dream. Then Christian looked up also, and in the air, just above the place where Faithful was standing, he could see a band of angels with their wings outspread, and he knew that they were waiting to carry the soul of the little pilgrim to its home in the celestial city. Oh my goodness, I could feel myself choking up a little bit then, poor Faithful being beaten so horribly, but the angels waiting for him to take him away where he wouldn't be in pain anymore. Let's move on to our devotion. And today it is, I just need to find the right page. It's called Light It Up. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Nothing says summertime, bearing in mind this is in American writing, this. Nothing says summertime like catching flashing fireflies on a warm night. I don't think we can, we have fireflies, do we? I've certainly never seen any to catch them. You might know them by their other name, lightning bugs. I don't think I've seen them, but I know of them. Did you know these flashing creatures are actually beetles? And more than 2,000 different species of them exist. They usually shine in colours of yellow, green or orange. And each of those 2,000 species has its own pattern of flashing. It helps members of the same species recognise each other. Fireflies are just one of the many creatures that are bioluminescent, which is a gigantic word that simply means they make their own light. It's a chemical reaction inside the firefly that makes the light. That's the how, but why? Why do fireflies shine? Well, the guy fireflies do the shining and they do it to catch the attention of the lady fireflies who are attracted to the light. Something about, thing, something about things that light up in the darkness make you want to get a closer look. That's why Jesus tells you to let your light shine. Of course, your light doesn't shine because of a chemical reaction. It comes from God's Holy Spirit inside you. When you do things out of love, tough things like being kind to an enemy or forgiving someone who's hurt you, People see the light of Jesus shining out of you. That light shines just like a firefly shines in the dark. And people can't help but to come closer to check it out, which means you get to tell them about God. So get out there and shine your light. Now I'll be amazed facts. A firefly's light is the most energy efficient light in the world. That's because almost 100% of the energy from the chemical reaction becomes light. Compare that to an old fashioned incandescent light bulb, so that's the old fashioned one with the little filament inside. That releases only 10% of its energy as light and 90% as heat. So it wastes so much energy as heat. It gives up so much more energy as heat than it does for light, which is what it's designed for. How strange. Lord, fill me so full with your love that it shines out of me. Teach me to light up this world with everything I say and do. Well, let's, let's finish our time together with a prayer and we are going to get myself comfy again. We are going to do the blue, blue prayer today and um, join me in praying with you. Dear God, please protect all those who are working for the NHS. Thank you for all they are doing to protect us. And God, we also ask that you would protect all the people who are working in shops and schools and um, anywhere now that is opening up. God, we just pray for your protection upon the staff of these places. And God, also we, protect, we ask that you would protect us as we go out and about a bit more. Please, God, help us to remember to wear masks when we need to, to keep our distance from people, not just to keep um, ourselves safe, but keep others safe. Help us to be thoughtful, considerate and kind. And God, as we have to queue up for things, we ask, help us to be patient, help us to wait uh, with with good intentions and Lord as we go about all of these things in this difficult situation Lord I pray that we would behave in a way that is honouring to you and in a way that shows your light 
shining from us and that that would be attractive to people and that they might want to come and have a closer look at what is causing our special light to shine and God if that happens we pray please give us courage and boldness to tell them about you. Amen. So have a great couple of uh, days before again on Friday we have more bedtime stories and also I'm going to do a little plug on the 10th of August to through to the 14th of August there is going to be a holiday club on this YouTube channel so keep uh, keep an eye out for a bit more information uh, please do join me for that it'll be 10 o'clock each morning on the Monday to Friday in August so yeah join me for that and uh, but I will see you on Friday Take care, have a great couple of days, stay safe. Bye everyone.